Well, I tried making hot cocoa, but it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. The taste is very watery and not very like chocolatey or I, I put a bit of like a pumpkin whipped cream in it. it. It's not what I expected and it's quite disappointing. A lot like the woman in white. Hi, I'm Spencer. I am going to talk about this book, The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. It will be hopefully unbiased, even though everything is biased, but it will be my 100% honest review. The Woman in White was written in 1860 by Wilkie Collins. I'm not gonna get into a lot of the like, who Wilkie Collin is, what the area was in 1860. This is primarily just the book and my honest and very unbiased interpretation of the work and basically a review of it. If you should read it, how you should read it, what you should know before going into it. Just kind of like an altogether guide. So I was assigned to read this. Uh, the, 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 the front is very nice. This very... I, I guess you could say long book, depending on who you ask, in my English class of the span of a few months while working on several other projects. And I, I let it very much sit and fester until I'd say like October to get into it, but I was very much looking forward to reading this book. This was my first choice actually of three, so I was excited to get it. it in the little blurb about the book, it was supposed to be about um, this this woman who escapes from an asylum, the woman in white. And I, I was quite disappointed, to say the least. I'll get into that later, but in the first, I'd say, hundred pages of me reading this, I loved it. I, I couldn't put it down. I, I probably read all hundred pages in maybe one to two sittings. I, I really liked it. I. I read a good amount in um, the back of my work, like when I'd be working in the back, so I'd just be like, oh, oh, this is so great, oh, this is so fun, like imagining all the characters and like having something to do. And I think that the book could have ended after the first, I'd say like 120 pages or so. It starts off with Walter Hart, right? This artist who travels to Limeridge House and meets this woman who we later know as Anne Catherick and it's all kind of mysterious and I, I really like that because I, I love Victorian novels, I love gothic elements because that this is supposed to be a quite gothic book. In some elements it has that but it very much lacks in others but so Walter meets um Laura, Laura Fairley, Laura Fairley, and Marion Fairley, and the, like five people. Um, a lot of them, there's, there's, it's a cast of characters. Some of them you don't really have to pay attention to as much, although they're referenced a lot. And most of it, they just have random conversations that don't make quite much sense. So sometimes I would be listening to the story very like. Like, yeah, this sounds good. And then they start going to the legality of marriage. And then it's like, oh, okay, this, what? And I get a little bit lost. And then they start with the story again. It's a whole thing. Anyways, Laura and Walter fall in love with each other. And then Laura's like, oh, well, the problem is I'm, I'm getting married to this person. His name is Sir Percival Glyde, who's like kind of the main antagonist of the book. And Mr. Walter is so upset he's spaghetti by this. He's just, I'm gonna go to South America because I can't even stand to think about you, to think about me liking you anymore. So he goes to South America, so Percival Glide and Laura get together and Marion, the half-sister of Laura throughout all of this, is like kind of in between Walter, like trying to be friends with Walter, but then also trying to care for her half-sister, Laura, making sure Sir Percival Glide is not this awful man, which he kind of is. 
And Marion is very much a feminist character, which I, I like in Victorian literature. It, I, I've seen this one reviewer on YouTube, I'll, I'll link it, uh, the picture here, how they mention Marion is very much like Joe March from Little Woman, and I most certainly say that. It's, it's refreshing to see somewhat of a feminist type character, like a modern day feminist type character in the Victorian setting. Well, I definitely think that in that regards, Marion is a very interesting character to have in the novel, and I quite like it. it it's kind of like Count Fosco. I'd say he's more of the main antagonist, who's like later discovered midway through the novel, but he's another really interesting character. I saw someone else describe him as like one of the most evil characters, or like kind of um, how he sets kind of like the cliche for the personality of like mob bosses or the antagonists in crime novels. So I definitely think that there are good aspects of the book and it primarily comes in the characters. I just wish there could be more about the characters because it seems to be a story driven by plot, but the plot's not very good. The, the characters are mostly the reason why at least I have continued to read the book. So the story very much could have ended there. Sure, it wouldn't have been that much of a great ending. They could have just like, I don't know, Walter kills Sir Percival Glide and oh, happy ending, yippee. But they do not. And it continues. And for another, God, I'd say 300 pages. The only, the, the main thing that happens that like if you were to be writing a summary that you need to be focused on is that Laura and Sir Percival Glide go on a honeymoon to Italy and they come back and they live at Sir Percival Glide's estate with Count Fosco and Count Fosco's wife. They introduce like 15 more characters. I, at this point, I was so unbelievably confused. I, I looked it up. There's 30 characters in the story. See, the thing is, some characters, they introduce at like a, a pretty, I'd say good level, like Walter High, right? That, that's a pretty well-rounded, like, okay, yeah, I kind of know who he is. But there are so many where they just mention the names and you're just reading or like in my case, just listening and thinking, wait, who's that character? Who's this? What are, what is going on here? It it gets very confusing because I'm sure as all people who read Victorian novels go, they tend to describe things a lot. Not only just like settings, but things people do and they tend to like over describe things and over, I mean, I love um, drama, but they like over dramatize things and just so much of everything like oversaturation of words and stories it for my little tiny puny brain especially at, at this point i was reading it while i was i think i was at the end of like othello essays and mostly 1984 so balancing between 1984 and this it's very much like what is going on here i'm not really getting a firm grasp and I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking, Spencer, you had, what was it, like two months to, to get a hang on this? Not necessarily. I, I had to do the Othello project before this. So it's not like I had a little grace period where I could just focus on the book. While I was focusing on the book, I had more things to do. And I'm sure you'd be like, okay, well, that's that's what you're planned for. This is, You're supposed to manage your time. You're supposed in a book like this, in order to understand it, you need to be 100% focused on this, which gets very draining at times. Just because it's like, I have to 100, put 100% of my focus into the legality of this Lord's lawyer talking about the legality of marriage and it, It's so much. It's 
and another thing everyone like the uh, it says right here the original sensation novel and that everyone has been saying that's the original sensation novel if it is more people would be talking about it. it'd be like as popular as jane ear on youtube sure you could like what what i do whenever i read books i read like a chapter and then i watch the spark notes of it so i get the full understanding there is no spark notes for this so i just had to okay so this is happening and then this happens and like it was so hard to connect the dots because usually i i like like a little fun little illustration to help me on my little journey but no no it Another thing, the, the the 400 pages in the, the very middle is very boring. It's dull. The first 100 pages, I was like, oh yeah, this a lot happened. A lot of stuff is happening. This is cool. And then it just takes a backseat. And it's just nothing to look forward to. It's... I did Words cannot explain and make up for the hours of, I mean, let me try to visualize an expression. That's how I, that's, that's how I felt. I want to mention, I don't think I mentioned this yet. The, the book was 24 hours on Audible. Mm -hmm. 24 hours. And um, I'm I'm sure by now you've seen my my feelings towards the book, especially the middle. So when I tell you I just sit there twenty four hours of it, an entire day I spent an entire day of my life on this. You can imagine how happy I feel, how pleased to feel that I've wasted an entire day of my life on this. You know, I I call this a learning experiment, experience, a learning experience to think, well, I guess I, I really shouldn't judge a book by its cover or or the, the name of the book or or the short blurb at the back of the book. Or I, I guess I shouldn't judge it on the little blurb that um, <clears throat> Mr. Bausch gave me. My, I, I, I think next time before I, I, I pick a book, I am going to read the entirety of it and then judge it and think, hmm, did it, did it really, did it really shoot the cover? Like what's, you know, what? when they say the cover, do they, do they mean like just this or do they mean that? Because if it's that, then I understand it now. I completely understand why you should not judge a book by its cover because it can be like the woman in white. So, the name of the book, if you have not catched on by now, is The Woman in White, Anne Catherick. She is mentioned in the first hundred pages, maybe, we, we see her talking, speak for like 20 pages, 10 pages in the beginning. That was pretty cool. Um, and then she's mentioned like three times. And then they don't mention her again for like 300 pages. And then she is, I guess, not an accessory, but she helps um, Sir Percival glide in, like, fooling everyone to think that Laura's dead, even though it's just Anne Catherick that's dead. So basically, she she's not much in the story for her, for the, the name of the story to be the woman in white. That, that was a major thing that was disappointing for me because the whole reason that I was like, oh, this book sounds cool, was because of the woman in white, because this woman escaped from an asylum. Because I thought that would be so cool for like a Victorian style asylum thing. Sounds awesome, like a Shirley Jackson Hunting of Hill House type thing. 
sounds cool. This was not it. They, they mentioned it so little of the time. And that was the character that interests me in the book. If anything, they should be calling it uh, Walter Hart Hartwright meets this woman and shenanigans ensue by Wilkie Collins. Is that at least... It's... This is the 1860 version of clickbait, and I have been clickbaited. It, it's the, the 1860 version of a bunch of emojis and wow, real, can't believe this happened. Because I, as the, the mindless five-year-old iPad kid scrolling on YouTube, saw it and thought, whoa, that sounds cool. Only to watch the video and find out, oh, it's... It's not what I thought it was. Oh, that's... I'm disappointed now. I am disappointed. Because that's what I am after reading this. Disappointed? I want to set the scene for you. I am in room 1125. Um, English, period 2. I am TAing, so... I'm, I'm taking this time to read my British novel. I am on page... I can find the exact page for you. 404 and I come upon this lovely different formatting because the rest of the format of the book it, it's very much like like a normal book and it has like ch different chapters and like sometimes it's just like this is continued by the narrative of Walter Hartwright or like Marion and then you come upon four different narratives in the span of like two pages so you're thinking, what's going on? What What is this? Laura, the, the main love interest of the protagonist, Walter Hartwright. The, I'd say she's even more of a lead character than Anne Catherick, who the book is named after. Yeah. So uh, Laura, she dies. Book page 400, and there's still 200 left. There's still... It's 640 pages altogether. She dies. Of a brain aneurysm. Out of nowhere! So you can imagine how I'm just like... Okay. The main love interest dies with 200 pages left of a brain aneurysm out of nowhere! Why wouldn't she? Why wouldn't she? Oh yeah. And, and the thing is, it's not even that, like, she was a character where it's like, oh, she, um, this is the end of her story, and she had to deliver this last, last message, and then she died like a Romeo and Juliet or something. No. No, she's just in the middle of her story. And then she dies. For the next, like, I'd say four pages, I just... What? Because I'm still, I'm baffled by this. I'm still trying to process. And then I find out. So Walter Hartwright comes back from South America and it's like, oh, well, this woman I love is dead. Wah, wah, wah. Oh no, so sad. So he goes to the grave and then he sees Marion and I, I think it was a cloak. And he sees another cloak all white and he's like it's laura laura's in the cloak standing over her grave oh yeah why wouldn't she what why wouldn't she you know who's buried in in laura's grave and catholic the woman in white the one who wasn't mentioned for like 200 pages It was at this point, I was I was already fed up with this book, but at this point I thought, are you serious? Are you serious? Okay, because I'm, I'm sure the people who lived in 1860 were like, oh my, she's not dead of a brain aneurysm. Oh boy! 
I'm sure they would have had a, a little kick out of the, the like, the whole story was a dream type cliche, I bet. But as for me, as someone who's not British living in, in 2022, I didn't like it. There was no build up. It was just, she dies of brain aneurysm. Oh, never mind, she's still alive. It hit me like whiplash. And I, I, even me just talking about this right now is giving me flashbacks to reading it and is giving me double the whiplash. <sighs> if you want to read a Victorian book, you see this on the shelf. Don't grab it. Grab it if you want something that will disappoint you like a child. I mean, we've all we've all heard it before though. I'm not angry. I'm just I'm disappointed. That's how I feel about him. I I'm not mad at you. I'm just disappointed. If you want an actually good Victorian era novel, Frankenstein. The Picture of Dorian Gray. Hell even Wuthering Heights. I had to read this for an English project. I, I wasn't primarily a fan, but is it a whole heck of a lot better than this? You've got options. You, you've got several of them. This is just three of them. It's just three. Find something better than this and have a lovely day. Thank you.